Omar Douglas and Javier Fortuna. 10 rounds, lightweights to start things off. Tale of the Tape is brought to you by Corona, who brings you the best in boxing. The significant number, the reach advantage for Omar Douglas, four inches. Right now, let's go to our ring announcer, Ray Flores here in Philadelphia. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Leah Cora Center here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Live on Spike, this is Premier Boxing Champions. The action begins with 10 rounds in the lightweight division. The three judges ringside arm, Dewey La Rosa, Anthony Lundy, and Tom Shrek. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black with the paisley blue as his trim. His professional record, a perfect one, 17 wins. A dozen of those coming by way of KO. Fighting out of Wilmington, Delaware. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Omar Super O Douglas. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue, white, and red. As a professional, 30 victories, 22 of those coming by way of KO against one loss and one bout even. Fighting out of Braintree, Massachusetts by way of the Dominican Republic. He is the former champion, Javier El Abejón Fortuna. The unified rules of boxing are in effect tonight. Ten point must scoring system, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A boxer cannot be saved by the bell in any round, only the referee can stop the fight. If the fight is stopped due to an unintentional foul before the end of round four, no decision after the end of round four, Seconds we out. go to the scorecards. Box. Sean Clark is the third man in the ring. We're set to go. Fortuna, the former WBA super featherweight champion, and Omar Douglas, who's undefeated, a five-time Pennsylvania State Golden Gloves champion, moving up the ranks. This is toughest test so far in his career. I'm surprised Fortuna hadn't thrown about 30 punches yet because that, that's what <laughs> right. we're used to seeing. We've seen him be so active in previous fights. You know, that, that was one of the things coming off a loss against Jason Sosa where he lost his title. He has an unorthodox style and he throws a lot. Those are two things that require confidence. Does he still have that confidence? He's had a win since that loss, but is that confidence all the way back, champ? Yeah, and then when you get hit with a big shot and, you know, like that and lose the fight, and you lose your title in the first defense, it has you rethinking everything. And that's why in the fighters meeting, I was surprised that he's in there, a tough fighter like this tonight. And a good combination by Sosa. And that's what we expected in the beginning. It's Fortuna, Fortuna looking good there. Goes upstairs and downstairs. And we're talking about an ex-champion. There's no doubt he has the ability to get there, but it's calculated risk and there's bad risk. And I, I don't know how this fight is going to turn out, but it could be a bad risk. Champ, in that fight against Sosa, though, he was leading at all three scorecards before getting knocked out in the 11th round. That's how your fame and fortune could change in one punch like yeah. we talked about. Now, welcome to boxing. <laughs> it's not how it begins, it's how it ends. <laughs> And how will Douglas respond here going up against a guy like Fortuna who's had 32 pro fights and has been a world champion? That's one of the big questions. Well, Bruce, he's going to have to match that intensity. I mean, when he turns it up, you got to be able to turn it up with him. Fortuna lands a straight left hand. Oh! No, Fortuna! There we go. Bad wrist is what I was talking about. Omar Douglas countering. Fortuna is down. He's got the 10 count. Mandatory 8 count. We wondered how Douglas would respond. He responded with a power punch. Now the momentum is has swung in his direction. That's huge. Third knockdown. Let's see how Fortuna reacts now. It looks like he has his wits about him. And now Douglas doing a good job tying him up. Third time that Fortuna has been down in his career. 20 seconds still to go in round one. And man, that's the worst thing you want to find out from your fighter. Can he take a punch in a heated battle like this? He's been knocked out before with one punch. He might have chin problems. Stop at the bell. 
going to try to battle back. Douglas counters. And a wild first round comes to an end. Fortuna looking like he was dominating and then got hit by that left hook. We'll be back. Keith Thurman is in the house. One time will be joining us later in our broadcast. The WBA World Welterweight Champion waiting for a big bout against Danny Garcia in March. Man, if Javier Fortuna thought this was a tune-up, this is a get-ready kind of fight, he's got a wake-up call in round one. I don't think he thought this was a tune-up fight. I mean, I'm sure he watched tapes. And what about the poise that Douglas showed? He was eating a lot of leather. And he came up with the big left hook and the knockdown. Now, the thing about Fortuna's style is he leans a lot to either side. He's off and off balance. And so if you can touch him, you can hurt him, it's easy to knock him down. He's not necessarily over his trunk, not really a classic kind of boxer. He moves a lot, very unorthodox. And again, if you're looking when he was fighting those mid-range type of fighters, he outclassed them, his energy overwhelmed them. But, man, you in there with a, a contender, like this, you gotta get, you gotta be on your game. A guy who's not shook by activity, right. like he, he he just weathered the storm and, and he, he remained calm. That's a dangerous guy. And you see, he's very poised. And even when he knocked him down, he didn't overreact. He stayed cool. Composure. You wonder about the confidence that Douglas just amassed from that first round. A lot of patience on the part of Douglas. And that's really smart. Combination by Fortuna. You don't want to burn out your energy unnecessary, try, unnecessarily trying to get a guy out of there when we can see Fortuna still right now has his wits about him. So he's going to have to set that punch up again. Yeah, exactly. And he got it just when Fortuna was getting busy, just when Fortuna was starting to feel confident. Bang, that left hook caught him. And Fortuna's a, a, an active fighter. He's a guy who wins by throwing a lot of punches. He's not the kind of guy to wait. Coming up on a minute to go in the second round. Two of the world's best lightweights will battle for Bellator Gold. The reigning champ Iron Michael Chandler faces former WEC and UFC champion Smooth Benson Henderson. Plus viral striking feed on Michael Venom Page returns. It's Bellator MMA Saturday, November 19th at 9, live on Spike. You see Douglas is thinking hook over the top off that lazy jab. Fortuna likes to let his right hand hang out by his waist, and left hook's there all day for Douglas. A lot of young fighters, man, like I was speaking of earlier, it's all offensive. You gotta respect that this guy has two hands just like you. You gotta anticipate those shots coming back. Fortuna hitting and moving. Short little straight on the butt left hand. Fortuna gathered himself nicely in this round. <laughs> Premier boxing champions at Spike encourage our nation's veterans to make the same commitment to their health that they made to their country. Veterans Operation Wellness promotes physical and mental health and wellness. What's your vow? And happy Veterans Day to all those who celebrated yesterday. And we salute all of you who defend our freedom. Break, break, Round break. number three. So Omar Douglas with the knockdown in the first round. Jimmy, I thought Fortuna came back in the second round was busier and kind of gathered himself. And he's a veteran, you'd expect that. Yeah, he certainly is and he's, he's active, he's busy. That's the key to the fight for him. And I think maybe that knockdown, Douglas is overthinking that left hook. He's throwing it a lot but he might be throwing at the expense of other punches because he seems hunting for that left hook. Yeah, again, you see uh, Fortuna, he's controlling the fight. He slowed it down a little bit in the second round, which is really smart. He didn't want to go back out there so aggressively and then fall right back into the same trap. I would advise him to just box and let it come to him. Don't try to force it. There you go. Combination by Fortuna. Punctuated by that straight left hand. Now he chops to the body. But he has he has to keep moving, though. Exactly. Get your shots off, but you got to move. Now, what I'm saying is Douglas always throwing that left hook over the top, still trying to land that knockdown punch. Outside of the one big left hook, 
It's been a few moments for Douglas so far. He has to let Fortuna know that I'm still here and I still can hurt you. And if he gave that first round to Douglas 10-8, it takes two rounds for Fortuna to get back even in the match, and he might be doing that right now if he continues to put the pressure on at the score, at the throw. Lefts and rights again. Fortuna this time gets out of trouble. And that's his stop right there. Hit and miss. Get in, get out. And that's his stop. When he pops and moves, he's very successful. When he stays in there a little too long, that's when he gets in trouble. Because he doesn't bring his hands back to his chin. He's not that kind of fighter. And Jimmy, that's what being multifaceted gives you. You gotta sometimes change your style on the dime in order to secure a victory. Fortuna won the vacant title on Spike, defeating Brian Vasquez in a 12-round unanimous decision in May of 2015. Then he lost the belt in June of 2016. Break, break, come on, come on, come on. All right, come on, let's go. Keep it clean, fellas. Look at Fortuna trying to eye where the opening is. Very clever in that regard. He's very tricky. Punches from a lot of different angles. That's when he's at his best. Changing it up, and last two rounds, I think he's done that. Fortuna comes back nicely again. Back in Philadelphia at the Leacora Center, the campus of Temple University, right here on Broad Street. Bruce Beck, Jimmy Smith, Antonio Tarver, Dana Jacobson. And off to an interesting first bout here between Javier Fortuna and Omar Douglas. Now that knockdown may have made Fortuna more dangerous because Douglas, you know, we talked to him about this fight. He said, you know, <laughs> made a joke about the dreadlocks, but you cut him to make weight. He said, with the dreadlocks, I'm 127. Right. He's not a big guy for this weight class. I think Fortuna didn't expect the power to knock him down. Now that he knows it's there, he's fighting with a little more edge. Yeah, you can see he's into his own right now. He's feeling really good. Using his footwork. He's seeing everything that's coming. And that's when he's at his best. He's, one, he's an awareness fighter. He's not a fundamentals fighter. Keeps his hands high, things like that. He's an awareness guy. He relies on being able to see punches coming. His react, he, he relies on his instincts a lot. Nice work in the corner by Fortuna, who's the, gaining the four-inch reach advantage of Douglas's by just cutting off the ring. Always moving, never standing in front of him. Now, another round like this, and then look for Douglas to start taking chances, you know, and, and put himself in harm's way. Because then he's going to feel that he's behind. He's going to have to do something big to catch up. And now Fortuna mixing things up. That time, leading with the straight left and then throwing the right hook. Oh! Douglas a little reticent to throw that jab. Right, right now, the reason I think that is, number one, the jab can be hard to use against the southpaw. Number two, I think he's over-relying on the left hook that got the knockdown in the first round. So when he throws that left, it's generally a hook. He's gotten away from the jab. Sean Clark doing a little bit of extra work there, trying to keep the two guys on their feet. Let's keep it clean. We want to fight. I want y'all to fight. Let's go. And what? makes his point. Fortuna doesn't speak English, but I think he got that. <laughs> and the reason Douglas may not be throwing that jab so effectively, every time he reaches close to Fortuna, look for that right hook, and it's coming right off the dime. Right, right Very quick. Douglas gets, a, gets caught up in lunging a little bit. And there, he snaps the jab, but Fortuna's not even close. Now, champ, you fought Ro, Ro Jones three times. An unorthodox guy didn't always bring his hands back. Does it take a while to get confidence a guy like that to find the opening? Well, I mean, this guy's not as quick or as fast as Ro Jones, but I mean, that's what made Ro Jones so effective. It was the speed that you didn't even know that he had. It was so blazingly, so that's what made a lot of fighters reluctant to throw. Because as soon as you open up, you're hit with three or four punches. Fortuna putting on a clinic here in the final Fox seconds break. of this round, landing a lot with the straight left hand. We'll be back. You right. Javier Fortuna, Omar Douglas. Out. We're through four rounds. Steve Farhood is with us ringside. 
How do you have this fight scored so far, Steve? Well, Bruce, it sounds close. I have Fortuna had 38-37. In reality, he's won three rounds, and he was winning the first round when he got caught necessitating a 10-8 round for Douglas. So Fortuna just seems to be quicker, a step ahead, leading with power shots. He's won the second, third, and fourth rounds pretty clearly. I have Fortuna ahead 38-37. And Antonio Tarver, that's class, that's experience, that's being a pro, the way he just kind of waited, and he won the rounds. He won, won number two, won the third, won the fourth, you know? And that's being a champion, and that's what he is, an ex-champion. So that's the difference, I think, if, uh, in this fight. It's class right now. Can Douglas rise to that occasion? Big jump the last three fights for Douglas, and this one is an even bigger jump in terms of class of competition. And again, hats off to uh, Fortuna's handlers, man, because they obviously have the world of confidence in their fighting. Because even after the loss, he fought an undefeated fighter, and now he's fighting another undefeated fighter. They must really believe he's the best of that division. When we talked about this fight, champ, you know, privately, you and I hanging out, you were like, man, this is a risky fight. Yep. Douglas is no joke. This is two guys in a row, undefeated, hungry. A lot of guys who lose their belt wouldn't take risks like that. He has. My hat's off to him. Yep. Straight left hand landed again by Fortuna. No risk, no reward. And I believe if he's successful tonight, you have to line him up with another have, title shot. <laughs> Can Douglas dig that left hook to the body as Fortuna scores and moves? He has to do something to, to affect the confidence of Fortuna, because you see the style. Fortuna's a confidence fighter. When he has swagger, when he really believes oh, yeah. he's the better guy, he lets him go. And it's one of those things where you have to get him off that mental game. And so far, after the first round, Douglas hasn't been able to do that. And another thing, he's winning rounds, not really fighting as energetic as he usually fight, throwing all those punches per yeah. round. You know, maybe he's slowing down and thinking a lot more. Maybe that first yeah. round changed his philosophy here tonight. First round can change the way you're thinking, the way you approach it, especially yeah. when you get knocked down. Exactly. He's been a little more accurate. He's thrown in more movement after the punches. Very good with the head movement. And basically controlling the fight. Just like that, booming out. Douglas throws the counter, nobody's there. Got the jab in, then he moved. Now Douglas getting aggressive, chopping to the body. Sometime a fighter gets spoiled, man. He hit him so easily with that, that left hand. He probably thought it was going to be there all night. <laughs> but guess what? Champions make adjustments. Yes. Final seconds of the fifth round. Well, there's never been a world champion from Delaware. Omar Douglas would like to be the first, but he's running into a former world champion in Javier Fortuna, who has figured things out nicely here in this bout as we head to the sixth round. Wild miss by Douglas. Now Douglas gets aggressive. Lands a couple of lefts. Fortuna counters. Staying in the pocket. Fortuna's not moving his head like he was before. He's staying in there and throwing. And what made him come out this round and just sit there, I don't know. But uh, that's what got him in trouble the last time. I will advise him to just stay, stick to the plan. Unless Douglas do something crazy, stick to the plan. Stick and move. He's a little fatigued, too. He's been using his legs a lot in this fight. This is how round six a lot so this round. Yeah, true. Well, he's acting he's in range now. He's got something to hit. Fortuna does not want a phone booth fight. And Fortuna very content to do a little tying up. Finding his legs again. Douglas with the right hand. It got through. Listen, stop holding. You're pulling the head down. He's saying he held my glove. That's what he's trying to say. Let's go. Keep it clean. Is there an opportunity here for Douglas in this sixth round? We were asking about a, a translator for Fortuna. 
during this fight, but I don't know if he can truly understand the instructions from the referee. He's speaking English, and he had a translator in the fighters meeting. That could cause some misunderstandings in the fight or during the fight. He seemed to be nodding there as if he understood, and he lands a straight left hand. But a lot of times, a good referee doesn't have to say anything at all because all of this is all hand. Yeah, you know what they're doing. Yeah, break, yeah. fight, you know, right. it's all hand gestures. No it's the little details, like he said, he was pointing to his glove like, hey, he was holding my glove. He doesn't know how to tell the referee. Right, that, right. That's just going to go, you know. Very crisp left there by Fortuna, and he moved nicely to his left. Fortuna's nickname translates to the Bumblebee because he's usually such an active fighter, a swarming style, but here he's been much more calculated in this fight. And he's doing a lot of holding right now, and the referee has already warned him. Every time they clinch, clinch it seems like Fortuna is holding a lot. So I think we're seeing a little bit of leg fatigue from Fortuna. He seems to want breaks a little bit more. He isn't moving as much. He's a little bit of fatigue. Sixth round is in the books in Philly. Mouthpiece in, seconds out. Well, Keith Thurman is in the house, and Step later back. tonight, he will be watching Danny Garcia. Oh. Big bout coming up between the two of them, scheduled for March 4th. And a unification bout in the welterweight division that should be a dandy. But first, Garcia's got some business tonight. And we're in our first bout of the evening. Javier Fortuna against Omar Douglas. Douglas has some lofty amateur credentials, but tonight, stepping up big time. He won his first 17 pro fights, but he's never seen a guy like Fortuna. You want to say, Antonio, throw those punches when you're setting it up. Break. A lot more holding by Fortuna here in the middle round. Thought maybe he needed a recharge in round six. Was not moving as much. Clinching a lot more. Than he's starting to get to him. Looks the same case in round seven. A lot of holding. I wouldn't be surprised the referee gave him a hard one or even taking yeah. even take a point away in this round or the next. He's getting close. Yeah. Just to make a statement that, hey, you got to cut this out. What I noticed in the last round, uh, Jimmy, was that Fortuna's punches just didn't seem to have the... Oh. Oh, now the referee's going to have to do something. Sean Clark. That's no box. Having a little difficulty with both guys. Got to keep it clean, folks. Chippy in there. Keep it clean. He's been saying that since round two. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't been listening. Fortuna. Scores as he moves. Again, a combination that he scored with the right hand. Once again, when you see Fortuna moving, he's doing great. When you see that angling, the back and forth, just like that, that's when he has Douglas confused. When he takes those breaks and stops moving, that's let, that is what lets Douglas back into the fight. Nice uppercut. Douglas coming in. Combination by Douglas. Fortuna hanging on. Douglas has landed some good shots in this round. And it's not like Douglas hasn't seen southpaws. He's seen a bunch of them lately. But it's a different type of southpaw. He's going left. He's going right. And he don't even, he's not even thinking about the foot. The foot uh, navigation. And you usually step outside of the south. Which side it's it's like, yeah, he's just not, not that worried about that. Looks like Douglas is gaining a little confidence in this round. He's had some effective punches. And getting much more aggressive. A lot of in-close punching by Douglas. Landed some good shots when Fortuna was moving. He was the one landing, but this fight getting ugly on the inside. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of holding, and the referee has worn both of them hard. So I expect that they keep that up, that it's going to be a point taken away sooner or later. Round number eight. 
That was a very close round because uh, Fortuna didn't really do much, and Douglas had the moment over there in the corner. And I just don't know how the judges yeah. saw that one. It's close. I gave that round to Douglas. I think he's got back in the fight a little bit. I gave him the last two rounds. See if Fortuna has an urgency about him. Look like a bad welt on the right side yep. of uh, Fortuna's face. Did that it come from a hook. punch? Yep. <laughs> and they've also been touching heads a lot. So. All right. Fortuna landing and moving. Right hand. Keep it clean. He ducks nicely there as he circles to his left. As as right, moves, clean. I think right he's going to be okay. But if he sits still and sit in the pocket, that gives Douglas a lot of great opportunities to land some big shots. Fortuna Stop. fights how he moves. Yeah. When he moves well, he fights well. When he doesn't move well, he doesn't fight well. That's a story. Great point. You know, great point. He fights from the waist down. When he moves and, and he's able to get light on his feet, then he lands and gets out just like that. When he doesn't, I think Douglas has the power punching advantage. And the movement for Fortuna creates great angle. Now, a lot of judges really pay attention to power punches. And we haven't really seen a lot of power punches from Fortuna right now in the last couple rounds. It seems like nothing is on those shots, Jim. More so just scoring blows and, you know, just arm, arm punches, basically. Whenever we've seen somebody hurt, it's been Douglas hurting Fortuna. Can Douglas get active here? Missing with the jab. Fortuna, Ooh. straight left, got through. Good combination by Fortuna. That time Douglas did the majority of the wrestling. Well, his referee show earned his money tonight. <laughs> I can separate these guys 10 times. <laughs> Sean Clark, 12 years in the game, 246 total bouts. Man, left hand. A lot of wrestling as this fight has gone on. Nicely done by Fortuna up against the ropes, threw three punches in that combination and got out of trouble. Another straight left gets through by Fortuna. So if he took a little time off in a couple of the last two rounds, he came back here effectively. The Leah Cora Center in Philadelphia. The PBC on Spike continuing. I'm Bruce Beck along with Jimmy what? Smith and Antonio Tarver ringside as we go to round number nine of this bout between Javier Fortuna and Omar Douglas. Right. <laughs> more and more, it's getting a little bit sloppy out there. Let's fight. Here's a look at Steve Farhood's scorecard, and it's close. 10 8 in the first round for Douglas with the one knockdown. And Fortuna was rolling for a while, but then Douglas picked up some momentum in the sixth and seventh. And Fortuna, as we said, had a much better eight. That 10 8 round, that means a lot in a 10 round fight. Fortuna has landed two. Right hooks, lead right hooks, he did it again. I think he's found the home for it. Jabbing to the body is Omar Douglas. That won't do too much. For right with the right hook. hand. He's, he sees something he likes in the aggression of Douglas. It's a check hook. Catches him coming in. Now, we don't think of Fortuna as a counter puncher, but he's kind of changed things around in this fight. Just a lot of holding and making a, a good fight ugly right now. Keep it clean, fellas. I'm right here. Trader Hector Bermudez and the Fortuna camp was confident taking on an undefeated young fighter who was on the rise. 
a challenge that some managers and some trainers would not take for their life. And again, Sean Clark, the referee, speaks to Fortuna. That's the hard warning yep. that we just heard. He said, if you hold again, I have to warn you, I'm going to take a point. And that point could be really costly in this fight. Very costly. It was very costly. Because if this any, anywhere like Steve said it is, then he can't afford a point taken. He's clear about that. Hands were free. He's got tangled up. Douglas still pressing the fight. Being aggressive. I don't know if it's effective enough. Effective aggressive. aggressive. Oh, he got through there. Good punch by Douglas. Douglas trying to exert some of his will here. Wild end to this round. Let's go back to the first round of this fight for a moment. Knocked down with the left hand. It wasn't just a flash knockdown. Look at that flush. That one hurt. But the former champ, Fortuna, has made adjustments since. So we go to the 10th and final round. Let's go to Steve Farhood and find out what's going on in his score. Bruce, still a close fight. I feel Fortuna has pulled ahead the last two rounds. He's winning the, the late rounds the way he won the early rounds. Pot shotting, moving, leading with the right hook. Uh, Douglas has no choice but to keep the pressure on. And uh, if uh, he, Douglas can win the 10th round, it's going to be a very, very, very close fight on the cards, I'm sure. Combination there by Fortuna. I'm right. Oh, man. Down they go into the ropes. There is no knockdown, believe me. Sean Clark is earning every dollar he's making out there. <laughs> Ooh, good right hook. Good crunchy combination by Fortuna. Well, you see the championship medal in him because he knows he has to finish strong like most champions do. Fortuna's gone to the 10th round eight times in his career, Douglas twice. He has to keep from holding. He cannot lose a point. Very, very close fight. Right I think he just out hustled him tonight with the experience. He relied on that. But it's a good fight. Took nothing away from Douglas. If he's not victorious tonight, he can go back to the drawing board. And I'm sure he's become a better fighter tonight from this experience. In close, Fortuna scores with the short. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Back comes Douglas with the right hand. Fortuna lands. Now, this is the heart of a champion. He's standing in there. He looks like he's getting the best of this one. Still a minute so far, to go. but back to oh. the body goes Fortuna. Douglas has shown he has power. If he's going to turn it around, it's got to be now. Look at Fortuna go. Fortuna with the three punch coming out. Ah, a big right hook. He won't to stop this tonight. Douglas is hanging tough up against him. He wants the knockout tonight. Look at him go forward. Ah. Here comes Douglas with a right hand. This is Philadelphia toughness. At its best in the 10th and final round. Fortuna has boxed and moved this entire fight, but right now he's looking for the finish. Great stuff. He knew he couldn't fight like this all night. Right. And give Douglas all those opportunities, but he's going to close the show. Coming up on 30 seconds to go. What does Douglas have left? That's Fortuna lands a crisp left hand. And Fortuna showing he's not just tricky, he's got heart, he's got guts. And he's shaking his head to say to Devil, uh uh, I got this one. And again, hats off to his handlers, man, because it takes a lot of confidence in a fighter to put him in there like this. <laughs> what a tenth round! <laughs> Great stuff. Outstanding way to kick this card off. Ladies and gentlemen, having completed 10 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judges at ringside, Tom Shrek and Anthony Lundy have the contest 96 to 93. And Judge Dewey La Rosa scores about 95 to 94. All for your winner by unanimous decision, Javier El It was
was unanimous, but it was close as Fortuna advances somehow. What a wild 10th round.